What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do kind of like an introductory video into SQL. A lot of you guys have been telling me that you're wanting to learn SQL or understand it a bit better, but I believe we probably just need to start off at the beginning with the basics. So let's go ahead and get started. Actually, before we begin, I just want to say I may not say everything word for word verbatim. I'm just trying to get you guys to get an understanding of of SQL and how it works, but just in case I misstate something, I'm just trying to say it in a way that makes it easy to understand. So I may not always use the exact terms, okay? So for this kind of tutorial or intro, I'm going to be using um, BigQuery, which is available for free. You can sign up for like a free account to kind of just practice if you'd like. I'm on a MacBook, so I can't get like Microsoft SQL Server, unfortunately. I wish they changed that and opened it up to other operating systems, but that's neither here nor there. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start off with SQL, SQL is an acronym. It's SQL, which stands for a structured query language. You will hear people say SQL or they will say SQL. I typically say SQL, so just depending on your preference. Same thing. It is a language that we use to query databases. And depending on where your database is located, you will use a relational, typically a relational database management system, aka tool, that allows you access to these different databases. Um, depending on your company, they may have some things that's available in the cloud. They may have something um, on like a virtual machine. So the way you access and query these different databases, you may have to hop between different tools. For example, I use um, typically Teradata and Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle. So again, it all just depends on where that data is located within what database is located in. SQL, what does SQL do? So SQL allows you to access and manipulate databases. You can execute queries against the database. You can retrieve data. You can update data. You can insert data into um, the database or a table. You can delete records. You can create new tables or views. You can um, set permission settings. So a lot of different things that you can do in the database or with SQL. But for the most part, you may be just doing queries. All right, so let's talk about the database, kind of like how it's structured. So if you are familiar with um, an Excel file, which I always say, learn Excel, it's applicable in a lot of different places. So with the database, it's kind of structured like that in columns and rows, and they're referred to as um, each row is referred to as like a record and each column is referred to as a field name. You may hear me use these terms interchangeably, but just columns and rows is typically how it's structured. And each individual entry has a different record, AKA row of data. And then the columns just identify what's in that specific row. So let's go on to the SQL syntax. So the syntax is pretty much the way that you write your code. There are certain keywords that each programming, like every programming language typically has a keyword and it's pretty much just instructions for what you're wanting to get done or what you want executed. So some of the main keywords in SQL that we'll be discussing will be select, from, we'll eventually get to joins, so that's a keyword. Then there's also where and and um, you have some other keywords like distinct, order by, but that's a little bit further. If you guys like this video, we can go into those in future videos. But the main ones that we want to discuss today will be our select from where and I think those are the very basic ones that you should have an understanding of and that you'll typically use the most. Now with keywords, it's important to understand that when, because you can create when you're creating your own tables or, or um, in the database or when you get to the stage of your joining data, you may need to rename your columns, aka field names, and you want to use um, a field name that is descriptive of what that data can or what that field will contain, the data that it'll contain. But you'd want to stay away from using keywords 
in your field names or in your table names. That's just a basic, try to stay away from that. So like the select keyword would be something, you don't wanna name a table select. You don't wanna name um, your field name select because that is a keyword that you use to query off. It's not to say that you can't, but you typically wanna stay away from doing something like that. And when you are writing your query, let's go ahead and actually do that. Like when you start to write your query, you will notice that your keywords are typically in a different color text or a different color font than the other words in your queries. Like when you compare to a field name versus a keyword, it should be in a different color. So for example, select, you see here it comes up blue, but if I put status, which isn't a keyword, it's black text, so, or black font. Just some pointers about how you can identify a keyword kind of quickly and stay away from using those as your field names. All right, so the keyword select, let's discuss that. Um, and again, your syntax is just how you structure and write your code. And with SQL, it is structured. So you have to write the code in a specific way in order to retrieve the data that you want. You can, if you write it incorrectly, you will not get anything returned. It's like when you go through school, you're taught the appropriate way to write, like the grammatically correct way to write your paragraphs and sentences and certain things like asking questions. You're taught the right way to do it. That's very applicable in SQL because if you don't write it the right way, you won't get the information you need. It has to be structured in a specific manner to retrieve your data. So just keep that in mind. And then with your syntax, like when you're writing the code, in general, for most relational database management systems or tools, you it's not case specific for the most part. I will say with BigQuery, when you're um, putting in your strings to retrieve certain data, it that is case sensitive, but for the most part, it doesn't matter if you write your text in uppercase or lowercase, just so you're aware, like select in lowercase, which I had it here, select here. We'll give me the same thing. And, and I will say it's not pulling it up here in BigQuery, but SEL in like Teradata, it recognizes that as select. You don't have to write the full word out, but in BigQuery, you do so there are some minor differences between relational database or between the database management tools like it can vary a little bit from sql server to bigquery to teradata to oracle but the gist of it is pretty much the same but you may notice some minor differences between the tools so just keep that in mind but here select uppercase lowercase it's still identifying the same keyword and in Teradata, I know, for example, I can type SEL and it like abbreviate the word select and it will still identify it as a keyword. All right, so let's talk about the select statement. So the select statement is used to select data from the database. So we are identifying specific fields that we want to retrieve in our select statement. So the table that we're going to work with or table, using this in quotation marks, you guys, we're going to use this Austin Bike Shear Station data, and this is the table here that we're going to be selecting from. And the schema just shows the layout of how the table is organized, so you can see the different field names, you can see the data type, and if all of this had been filled out, like descriptions, that type of thing. In other relational database systems, you may just see the field name type. You have to typically query, like you can do like a help table query if you wanted to find out more information like this. But this is kind of cool that you can just do a preview and it shows you all that information. Or you can look at the schema without having to write a query to see this information. All right, so the select statement, you're identifying what specific fields you're wanting to retrieve from it. So let's go ahead. We're going to look at station ID, name, or we're going to Put in our select statement these are the field names that we want to retrieve which is our station id name status and i'm going to do property type as well so let's go ahead and write that in i already wrote in the word status and if you use uppercase lowercase that is personal preference and another comment if you are familiar with python i will just say really quickly that 
Python, you have to, it is case specific. And then also you have to indent your data in order for it to run the code appropriately, depending on what it is that you're doing. So that's not really applicable here. Like the indentation thing that you, like I can indent or not indent and it'll still run all of the code just so you're aware. All right, so we're gonna do select. Now, when you are writing in your field names, you need to separate each field name by a comma. How you do that is personal preference. I like to list mine in each in a different row. And some people, they have their rows going across. So for example, if I do station ID comma status comma name comma property. So this is how some people will write their um, field names going across comma separated. I prefer to have mine going down. So I will, oh, did I write this right? STD. Yeah. So I like to have my going down and I like to have my commas on the left. Some people prefer to have theirs on the right. This is how I prefer to write my column names in. You could do it on the opposite end, for example. You could do it this way, where it's on the right. Again, just personal preference on how you want to do it. This is just how I prefer to do it. So to each their own but you're accomplishing the same thing, just so you're aware. All right, so we have our select statement. We're advising the specific fields that we want selected in our query that we want it to return. These are the names that we of the fields in the table that we're working with. And the next statement is to tell, to put in the code where you want this data to come from there's going to be hundreds of tables, if not thousands of tables in the databases that you're working in. So you need to specify which table this data is coming from. So that's where you put it in your from statement. And I'm just gonna copy in the name of the table. And with this query, we could run it and, and get data back, but just as a best practice, and you may see this implemented if you're working for a specific company, they don't want you scanning the entire table to retrieve data where it's scanning every table every row so you want to add a filter and your where statement is what acts as a type of filter for you where you can filter the records down so for example I, instead of retrieving everything i can put a where statement in here to say okay bring me back these columns from this table where there's a specific thing happening. So I could say where the status, I think I would chose active, status, close. Yeah, so let's filter it down to show active. So where status equals active. And I changed, so one, I put active in single quotes because it is a string that we're working with as far as the data type. And let me just show you that in our schema, you see status, it says it's a string. So strings are captured by single quotes. And then we can add an additional filter and use another keyword, which is our and statement. So when you use your where clause, you can contain one or many and operators and it's used to add additional filters to your where statement pretty much. So I can say where the status is active and another thing is applicable. So we can add to our and, let me do the preview. What can we do? We can say, let's do power type and power type equals solar. So and power equals solar. So I have where, what I'm selecting, 
where it's coming from and I'm adding filters to reduce the amount of results that I have returned. So with BigQuery, one thing that I like is that it does give you kind of like an indicator of if your code will run or not. Instead of having to run it, you can identify any errors that you have up front with other database management tools. You typically get an error after you run it. It doesn't typically identify, hey, this is wrong. <laughs> you need to fix this up front. So I do like that about this. Like you get the green check mark letting you know that your query is going to process. So good thing to know, but just know that other tools don't do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and run it. And we have our results. So we have our station ID, our status, our name, and hold on. I said, did I say power type? Oh, I didn't. Oh, this says property type. Hold on. Let me change this. I want this to be, I entered the wrong one. I want this to be power type so we can see. I want this to be power type too so we can see it. So let me rerun that, y'all. All right. So we can see what we asked for is what was returned. We asked for these four column names. We asked for our where statement to filter our results down to only bring us back the status that are active and the power types that are solar, which you can see here. All right, so that's going to be it for this kind of introductory SQL video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. If you'd like to see more video, more SQL tutorials like this, let me know as well. I think the next video, I've, I've done a video on joins, but I think we can cover that in the next video if this is something you guys are interested in. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.